Yeah, you know, the- from this are, are going to be, you know, we're not going to forget this again. I always come, I keep coming back to this thing. I'm like, I remember growing up as a kid and I would see people, you know, in other countries, you know, in a, in a place long, long ago, far away somewhere, you know, ancient history and something that that could never happen here. Yeah. And then here it is. Uh, here it is. We have become that country that I would see uh, and, and would almost feel comfortable like, oh, my, I can sit back and relax because it's never going to happen here. And it's been here mm-hmm. all the while. And, and now it's 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 uh, it's kind of rearing its head. But there's and my 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 uh, uh, minister spiritual folk would tell me that, you know what, something fights the hardest right before it dies. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, this this could be this this could be the the last gasping breath. Uh, I, you know, I gotta at least act like I believe it <laughs> and keep my eye out for it. But it's, and it's uh, sad. I I heard I heard uh, someone say that they visited one of the countries, and um, when they were about to leave, uh, one of the citizens came up and said, "Yankee, go home and take me with you." Mm. And I mean, that's how people looked at the United States as that beacon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's sad to say that that has uh, we need. That's, I think, the traumatic thing that we're going to have to deal with. Those of us of age who remember better times uh, for the next couple of years. Right. Next couple of elections. Right. When people were talking about, you know, this. We were the pillar of democracy. We were the ones going everywhere else and showing everyone else how to be. This is part of what set us apart. Yep. Uh, how we were able to rise, uh, aside from all the other stuff we took and stole and beat, and shot and killed, <laughs> aside from all of that. But, but you know, what we did at home, at least, it, what we looked like we were doing at home, the democracy, uh, was the thing that people were looking to to mm-hmm. um, try to, to to emulate. And then, mm-hmm. and now you got this. And now this all in... I mean, it's easy to dismiss it and say all in four years, but uh, it, you know, we we all we know better. Uh, mm-hmm. going for a minute, Chief. I mean, this is crazy. It is, and you know, one of the questions I have for you, um, Leonard, is: Do you see a healing point? How, how long does it take to heal? You know, for example, do you see any of the? of the angst on either side of this issue uh, subsiding to the point where we may be able to, you know, find some common ground. Do you, do you see that from a mental health perspective? That's, that's the point. The common ground needs to be established. Um, you know, I heard someone say the other day that we've been affected uh, uh, for the next generation, you know, and we, we've got to think of uh, the children and younger folks who are coming up and look to see if they're that salvation, if they are the ones who can uh, join together uh, to push this agenda. And I'm talking about this American experiment to push this forward, because right now uh, there's been some serious damage done. And uh, uh, we use the word trauma. This whole country has been traumatized uh, during these last five years. And so to that extent, you know, it, it's going to take a while for us to come out of it. Ne- never mind the uh, issues surrounding uh, mental health treatment. And there are many. Um, one of them is that uh, for the uh, last 20 years, uh, mental health is uh, trying, has been trying or seeking parity with physical health. And what goes on uh, as far as the payment and 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 all of that. Uh, so we're still struggling with that. Um, you know, you have managed care, which is managing some of the uh, uh, benefits that a lot of folks have. You have a lot of people who have lost that connection because they've lost the job during the pandemic. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a need to restructure the whole mental health approach so that uh, everybody can get the help that they need. And that's going to take some time. And so when you, when you combine that with this whole COVID piece, uh, I, I know that that can't help with the, with the mental health outlook for the, for the country. 
No, it's all a part of that traumatization that has occurred. Uh, it includes um, the the uh, uh, concerns uh, that we had with uh, racial disparity, uh, which is one of the things that uh, has been impacting um, black mental health to that extent. But, uh, you know, when you layer on COVID, when you layer on what uh, is going on in the government, you know, you have uh, a country that's in the state of trauma. Mm-hmm. Wow. And and so what types of things would you well, let me take that back. Where do you start in terms of the process to get people out of that that Kool-Aid state of mind, if you will, that you just mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it has to from my perspective, it has to start with those people who uh, understand the legal part of this uh, democracy okay um, and can and can talk about that uh, you know uncut mm-hmm. straight no mm-hmm. chases mm-hmm. they need to be able to do that and that you know and I'm talking about not being politically corrected and, and uh-huh. sometimes you know that we um, give it to them the way it needs to be given it to them. see one of the things that I'm aware of is that we have hidden a lot of stuff from the American people and uh, not had faith in their ability to adjust. I'm just going to take the pandemic, you know, uh, to to give uh, us the real information about the pandemic. We would have been able to deal with that uh, and and make the adjustments that just as we have in the past. And so I think it begins with uh, our legal representatives, um, political representatives being honest about uh, where we're at And we go from there. When they're honest, then they start giving support where it's needed. So some of the money that's needed for people to get the mental health treatment that they need and substance abuse treatment that they need then becomes more available. I'm thinking that this new generation, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this this new uh, administration uh, has that certainly on their minds, how to heal. Uh, So it's going to start at the top. Uh, I have actually had this discussion with um, the vice president elect when she was here in the city. And it, it is one of her focuses. Mental health is one of her key uh, agenda items. Yeah. It's, um, some, uh, oh, go ahead. Wendell, go ahead. are you uh-huh. logged on Facebook? Am I? I am. Uh-huh. We have a couple of questions up there. Well, comments more than Chris questions. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm just looking now. Yeah, we got some of the folks, and, and you know, and, and we know all of. You know, well, I guess we know all. Of, not everybody in the in the group is is. Uh, I don't know though. I'm trying to think because one of the comments was uh, they can't accept uh, that all of them, there's too many of them out there to say that all of them have mental health issues. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm. I think. I think it's about degrees, <laughs> and. In this uh, um, uh, particular, you know, in this crazy world that we live in, if, if we can, if we can get, if you come to accepting some of this stuff is normal, you got to have some degree of, of something wrong with you. I mean, the way we've managed to, to get along uh, in this, in this country, I mean, with all the craziness that we see, I mean, people who, you know, a country that at its inception said somehow justified that it's okay to make some people not human to look at people as not human to make them you know property and things like that at the country's inception you know i mean they're they're like ignoring that i mean there has to be some kind of something i don't know what you call it i mean uh, it's like they added a whole nother party like you have the democrats you have the republic then you have the trumpers like they have like their own party Right, the, which is which really started bubbling up as the Tea Party before, and right. then it kind of you know kind of eased into that birthers thing, and now it's just blown. You know, he again, as I said, he is the dude singing their songs. He's like, right. he, he is like that. He is just singing their greatest hits, and they're having a ball listening to him. And they came listening to, to him, no matter they, what it is. They're like, they're all this in. Was, this was their crazy ass Woodstock. You know, for them, but it was he was singing all their songs. 
And I don't, you know, I just don't know how you, um, uh, don't drink. Oh, this, this is beyond, <laughs> this is beyond, uh, entitlement and privilege. This is just straight up, uh, you know, they're showing their hand all the way. I mean, they're going all the way out and, um, it's hard to get to a part or a place of healing. I think if, if you, if people are unwilling to acknowledge what it is they're doing, how do you get folks to acknowledge um, that? You know, I had a, a, a friend when I was in the legislature and we were trying to do some stuff and I, I have to clean it up because the way he told me was straight, no chaser for real. But he said, it's hard to explain the truth when dumb Maryland farmers <laughs> want to believe a lie. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what he said. And, and, you know, I mean, it's harsh, but it's, it's real. It's raw, but it's real. You, you can't, you can't explain the truth to somebody if they're so vested in the lie. And, uh, and these folks are, are invested in this crap that they believe that is just crazy. I mean, it's been, you know, refudiated at every, at every angle, you know, the, the election was, they took it, they dragged it through the courts. They tried to, they, you know, everything. First, they took it to the election. You know, people voted, it's what it is. They took it to the, um, to the, all of their legal uh, uh, options. He weighed and tried to do that. And they moved that out. He tried to stack the court and thought he was going to get some help with that. He tried to get uh, <laughs> Pence to say, hey, you're going to step in in the last minute and save me. And this is crazy. I was just, I mean... I don't know. There's no, there's no explanation for it. I mean, it's, you know, and, and whatever happens, you know, if we, in, whatever happened with the other election, the, the second Senate election, did they, did they even get to finish that yet? Yeah. Yes. Also, yes. they did. Yes. Yeah, he, he won. won. He won. Okay. So now the country is like 50, 50, literally. Right. <laughs> you know, 50, 50 with a, with a, uh, tiebreaker. Uh, a, a tiebreaker, but still 50, 50. When's the last time it's been like that? Um, so this is just, um, it, it, it's, it's the, the country is, you know, is, is split in half, uh, quite literally. Um, and we just, yeah. So, so where do we go from here? You know, where do we go? How do we rebuild? Um, as, as people always talk about our better, our better angels, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, if you can't, I, I have a hard time trying to figure out how, and I'm one who's big on healing and trying to, you know, get along and reaching across the aisles and talking to people and let's figure out where the similarities are. And then we can work with that because we got more of those and we have differences and figure out what it is. But if you're not going to acknowledge, <laughs> if, you, if you're not going to acknowledge the basic facts and if you're going to twist and turn all of that stuff, then I, I'm really not interested. What we got to talk about? I mean, how are we going to heal from there? So, so I don't know. I don't know what we, um, how we manage to move um, through this. As I said, you know, this this is just, it's been brewing for such a while. But how do you get beyond it? Uh, do you just kind of keep moving and ignore them and then, you know, let them fall by the wayside? But, you know, as I look at, aside from, from 9-11, all the worst things that have happened in America have been by Americans. Pretty much, I mean the whole institution of slavery, the uh, uh, you know, Timothy McVeigh blowing up, you know the, the joint in Oklahoma. I mean all of the other crazy stuff that has happened has been by people in this country. The, the, our greatest threat has uh, is, seems to always be from the inside, mm-hmm. not so much the not the outside. And then this is not the not to mention as we're going through all of this. I mean I'm not trying to be funny, but. If that ain't a super spreader event in the middle of a pandemic, yep. <laughs> you got yep. all these people, no mask, no nothing, just grabbing. On, of course, they're grabbing on each other. That's fine because none of us. On they're top talking of about, Christmas, on top of New Year's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you got idiotness. You know, you got ridiculousness. And you know they ain't getting tested. They ain't right. tested because they don't believe it. Because they don't believe it. They don't believe it. But I And wonder, you're not going to take the... the uh, Vaccine, vaccine, so. yeah, yeah. Well, they don't need a vaccine because it's not real. And then am I? Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna take a vaccine. That's that's just you trying to inject me. You know that they'll come out with a story of QAnon saying, you know, the vaccine will make you black. I mean, that'll be the next <laughs> thing they'll say. And next thing they say, don't take it. They're gonna make you black. Your lips will get bigger. And then no, 
We can't have it. They're trying to turn everybody black. It's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you laughing, but I, they've.